Please. Um, all right, sorry, give me one second. I'm gonna start my uh, stopwatch. Okay, thanks. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk about um, AMP uh, to characterize optimal type one, type two error trade-offs for um, sorted penalized, uh, sorted L1 penalized estimators or, or slope. So this is joint work with some folks from uh, the University of Pennsylvania, uh, Jiki Bu and Wei Ji Su, and then also um, my colleague, Jason Kluzowski uh, from, from Princeton. So um, while that notion of sorted L1 regularization can be used in many problems, I'm gonna keep it simple today and just talk with uh, talk about high dimensional linear regression. So this is the framework we're all, you know, kind of know and love, right? Um, we're thinking of output Y equals X beta plus noise. Um, my X matrix is going to be high dimensional. So it's short and wide. Um, I'm in the, the usual asymptotic regime that, that most of us have been talking about where uh, the ratio of the rows and columns um, is some fixed delta. Uh, we'll assume that the matrix is IID Gaussian. And um, I'm also going to assume that my vector of coefficients beta uh, is sparse with IID entries. And in fact, we have linear sparsity. So a, a fraction of the, the elements are non-zero and that fraction stays fixed as n grows. So um, again, what I'd like to do, I know Y and I know X and I'd like to recover beta. So, um, okay, so for, for this problem, a, a well-known and widely used uh, procedure is the lasso. Right? And so what does the lasso do? Well, it produces an estimate of this coefficient uh, vector beta uh, by minimizing a cost function where the cost is the sum of a, a data fit term. You know, this is the, the sum of the squared errors plus a penalty term where the penalty is the L1 norm. All right, so um, the, the penalty term there uh, forces a sparse solution, right? And the, the level of the sparsity in the solution is, is controlled by uh, this parameter um, lambda. So the larger the lambda, the more sparse our solution. So, um, okay, so what I'd like to talk about today is a, a new procedure uh, referred to as slope or uh, sorted L1 penalized um, estimation. That's a generalization of the lasso. And so the idea with slope is we want to break the monolithic L1 penalty in the lasso that treats every variable um, in the same way by instead using a penalty that uh, uses different regularization uh, depending on the coefficient magnitudes. So uh, the motivation for slope was um, to control false discoveries um, by sort of privileging correct support recovery over minimization of prediction error. So, uh, when I say false discoveries, this is a notion I'll use throughout the talk. Um, I mean elements in the output that are non-zero uh, that correspond to zero elements in my, my true beta, right? The, there's also the notion of true discoveries, which are going to be, you know, non-zeros in the, the, um, the output that correspond to non-zeros in the, the truth. And so the way that um, slope sort of controls the false discoveries is uh, by incorporating adaptivity into its penalization sequence here, right? So uh, it's like the lasso, we have a, a cost function that's two terms, a data fit term and a penalty, but now my penalty is adapted. And so um, what I mean by that is um, it sort of uh, penalizes different values uh, depending on, on their magnitudes, right? And so the, the adaptivity that it, it sort of is motivated by is um, that in strategies like Benjamini Hochberg, uh, the, the procedure for multiple testing, which you're going to you know, compare like more significant p-values with more stringent thresholds. So we're going to kind of marry those ideas with uh, the, the usual advantages of the L1 uh, penalization that gives us that, that sparsity. So um, it turns out that, that this sort of uh, adaptivity in the, the regularization sequence for slope um, gives it a lot of nice properties. Uh, for example, it can be adaptive to uh, the level of the sparsity. So you don't necessarily have to know that ahead of time. And um, it obtains optimal performance in, in certain problems. And so um, though the lasso is clearly a specific form of slope, so right, I could just take all of these lambdas to be equal and I get back the lasso, um, you know, the lasso isn't going to have, you know, all of these, these nice sort of properties. So uh, what we aim to do in this, this work is to kind of quantitatively characterize the benefits of this, you know, uh, 
freedom in, in this, you know, sorted uh, regularization and kind of just further contribute to um, helping sort of answer the, the question of what, what, what does this actually give us um, by uh, in particular exploring model selection properties of slope. And uh, we'll do this with the help of AMP. So I'm gonna sort of give the talk by um, sort of telling us the, the implications this has for, for slope. And then I'll talk a little bit about um, uh, the AMP aspects of the, the proof. Okay, so um, when we're, in order to characterize uh, model selection, I'm going to talk about uh, the true positive proportion or the TPP and uh, the false discovery proportion or the FTP. So um, this sort of gives some idea about, you know, uh, the, the rate at which our procedure is finding, uh, you know, true discoveries versus false discoveries. And so um, in particular, uh, something that uh, has been shown before is that in the case of the lasso, there's a fundamental trade-off between uh, this true positive proportion TPP and false uh, discovery proportion FTP that's uh, rigorously characterized. So you can, you know, uh, you, you, we sort of know the best um, the lasso can do in terms of uh, comparing these two values, right? So this is equivalent to like a type one, type two error trade-off um, if, if that's more familiar language. So, um, okay, so formally, if we're talking about the lasso, uh, the situation looks like uh, this. So uh, the work that um, Weiji did, uh, you know, uh, in, in his dissertation sort of computes an exact boundary curve uh, that separates achievable uh, FTP, uh, TPP pairs from those that are impossible to achieve uh, by the lasso, um, no matter what the signal to noise ratio is in the problem and no matter what regularization parameter you use. So um, kind of, you know, Obviously, right, what we'd like is for the FTP to be low. We want no, you know, low false discoveries and high TPP, high true positives, right? So it's kind of like, this is the region of the FTP, TPP plane that, that we'd like to, to hit. But it turns out, you know, that uh, this work shows that this, you know, whole favorable region um, can't be reached by the, the lasso. So uh, in the, the, this image, right, the shaded area is the unachievable region by the, the lasso. So in short, um, what, what this work sort of implied is that, you know, no matter the choice of the regularization parameter and no matter the signal to noise ratio, both types of errors can't be low simultaneously. Uh, moreover, um, what they show is that, that, you know, when delta is small, so when my matrix, my measurement matrix is really fat, um, or when epsilon is large, meaning my signal is, is dense, uh, the TPP is going to be uh, asymptotically bounded away from one, uh, again, no matter what you do with the regularization or the, the SNR. And so um, this is sometimes referred to as a donahoe tanner phase transition, and it's visible on the, the plot on the left by this kind of vertical line here. Right. And then um, in the plot on the right, we, we just have the epsilon delta space where such a phase transition occurs. So the, the sort of epsilon delta pairs where, you know, your TPP for the lasso is going to be bounded away from one. So um, in problems where such a phase transition occurs, uh, I'm going to refer to sort of this largest achievable value of the TPP as the Donahoe Tanner power limit or the DT power limit. So, you know, in our plot, the DT power limit is going to be something like point, point 0.6 here. Okay, so um, here I'm, I'm plotting sort of the realized FTP TPP pairs for both uh, lasso and slope on the same problem um, where we have 10 independent trials and I'm just varying the regularization uh, of both methods uh, across the kind of um, the, the trials. So um, the message uh, that, that, you know, I want to, to sort of convey with these plots is that, you know, uh, if we look in the low TPP regime, both methods seem to undergo a similar trade-off between FDP and TPP, right? So the red and blue points are kind of, you know, they look the same, right? But, um, What's more interesting uh, in somehow is that 
in the high TPP regime, uh, clearly, you know, in each plot, there's a certain TPP past which we never see red points, right? So this is exactly the, the DT phase transition on the, the previous slide. So, you know, it's like 0.6 here and maybe 0.4 here. But, um, you know, obviously the blue points though, aren't bounded away from, from uh, full TPP in the same way that the, the red points are. So it's like the, the blue slope points um, are able to pass this limit towards uh, achieving full power. So um, kind of recognizing this, right? Uh, we're tempted to ask like, why is sorted L1 regularization uh, better than the usual L1 regularization uh, for high TPP? And um, why do slope and uh, lasso exhibit similar uh, trade-offs in the low TPP regime. And so um, this is what we're, we're going to try to, to answer today. Okay, so um, what, you know, what we set out to do uh, is to characterize the optimal uh, FDR TPP trade-off curve. So um, what I mean by the optimal curve, right, is uh, I would like to give the smallest possible value of false discoveries um, that's asymptotically achievable by slope uh, with any regularization, any SNR, um, for every fixed level of the TPP, right? So I fix my TPP, how, how low can I, can I drop the false discoveries? Um, so it turns out that uh, we weren't able to actually uh, do this exactly, but we could give upper bounds and lower bounds uh, for this, this curve. And so I'm gonna introduce the upper bounds and lower bounds next, and then talk about how AMP helped us uh, to get there. Um, so if I give an upper bound and lower bound, obviously the true curve somewhere in the middle. So the goal, you know, the aim is that these are tight in some, in some sense. Okay, so in this plot, uh, I, I give an example of, um, the bounds for just a single problem instance. So the plot on the right is just kind of a zoom in of the, the plot on the, the left. Right? And in the, the plot, the blue and the green curve is our upper bound, and then the red curve is the, the lower bound. And so we know that the optimal curve is between the two. So, um, okay, so I wanna discuss a little bit about how we get these bounds, uh, and then I'll go into to some more details. So, uh, when we consider the upper bound, so this is the blue and the green, uh, to prove this upper bound, our proof is, is constructive. So in the, the sense that, you know, we specify a prior on the signal and a regularization sequence for slope. And then uh, we show that this asymptotically achieves that FTP TPP um, point. And so, you know, if we can achieve it with a certain, uh, set up, right, then the minimum FDP must be below, below that value. So uh, below the uh, DT uh, power limit, um, the, the upper bound is simply given by the corresponding curve for the, the lasso. So this is green on the, the slide, right? And so um, this is just, you know, recognizing that the lasso is an instance of slope. The fact that the lasso can achieve these values means that the slope must be able to do it at least uh, as good. Um, and then uh, the, the other part of the upper bound above the, the DT power limit, which is the blue case, um, it turns out that this is given by a, a sort of the shape of the curve is a, a Mobius transform. And so um, I'm gonna discuss the, the proof of the upper bound um, in what follows, but uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's constructive in the sense that it specifies a simple sort of regularization um, and then it uses the AMP analysis to uh, demonstrate that such a re regularization achieves these uh, FDP TPP pairs. Um, okay, so then um, I, I'll talk a bit about the lower bound, but this is all I'm going to say about it uh, in this talk. So um, it turns out that proving the lower bound on the, the optimal curve is actually a bit more subtle. Uh, and so to, to do this, we developed a technique um, based on a class of infinite dimensional convex optimization problems. And uh, while like, I, I think like the, the actual proof is like, um, is pretty cool and uh, it, it uses some novel ideas uh, that probably, you know, I imagine will have um, application in, you know, when we wanna prove theoretical uh, things about regularizations more generally um, for the sort of, for the sake of time, I'm, I'm going to focus on uh, the AMP aspects of the, the proof. 
Um, but uh, before I, I uh, okay, before I get to the proof, um, I just want to show one more um, picture of, of what these upper bounds and lower bounds look like more generally. So on the last slide, it was like one problem instance, but now I'm trying to vary the epsilon and, and delta um, pairs here. So in this uh, image, the solid lines are the upper bounds, uh, the dotted lines are the lower bounds, the true curve lies somewhere in between. So you know, it's like, I'm happy to report on the slide that the upper bounds and the lower bounds are pretty tight. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of show this slide because uh, there's something kind of interesting going on in the, the plot on the bottom right. So there, are, in all of these plots, we're fixing either delta or epsilon and then varying the other one. And so um, if you look at the plot on the, the uh, bottom right, and this is something I don't really have a great explanation for, but um, you can see that what happens is we fix delta. So we fix the dimensions of our measurement matrix and we're varying the signal density. Um, and it turns out that the trade-off curve isn't monotone there, right? So as the signal is getting more dense, it's not like the problem is monotonically getting more difficult or something, um, which uh, you know is perhaps something we would expect and is in fact the case for the, the lasso. Um, Okay, so I had one more plot, but I'm gonna skip it and uh, for the sake of time and just talk a little bit about um, the proof. Uh, so I just wanted to say at a high level, you know, um, when we talk about the proof, I'm gonna talk about mostly the upper bound um, beyond the DT uh, power limit. And so um, just at a high level to give you some intuition for how the sort of freedom in these parameters helps us uh, beat the power limit and slope. Um, I, I made this slide. So the kind of idea is that it's well known uh, with the lasso that um, the lasso estimator will select at most in out of its p uh, elements to be non-zero. And um, moreover, you know, a significant proportion of um, false detections are always going to occur uh, for the the lasso. Um, in this like linear sparsity regime. So, uh, and this is interspersed along the lasso path. So it's always going to miss uh, a fraction of the, the true variables, which gives that DT power limit. So um, on the other hand, in slope, uh, we don't have the same sort of bound on, you know, in out of the P non zeros. The kind of corresponding bound is in fact on the number of unique non zero magnitudes. Um, so in theory, you can, you know, kind of construct an extreme case where the, the recovered slope estimator is completely dense, in which case, you know, the TPP is automatically one. So um, that's kind of the high level idea about what, what changes here. Um, but what I want to talk about is, is how we actually, you know, prove this. And so uh, the, the, the big idea is that, um, it's constructive. So we use a simple like two level regularization sequence. So um, instead of just penalizing with one lab lambda, we now have two lambdas and you know some fraction gets the, the big lambda, some fraction gets the smaller lambda. And we're going to use AMP to, to characterize the trade-off curve exactly for this regularization sequence. And so um, the, the program kind of um, that Cedric uh, laid out before is uh, you know, is the following. We're going to, you know, construct an AMP uh, algorithm, show that its fixed point solves our optimization problem, and then prove that my AMP um, converges to that fixed point. And then once I have that, I can pass the, the sort of statistical guarantees from the AMP state evolution onto um, my, my slope estimator. So um, this is kind of where I'm starting in my proof sketch. My AMP analysis gives me an asymptotic characterization of, of the slope solution, you know, from its state evolution. And then I use this characterization to characterize or to, to say something about the properties of the solution, like the sparsity, the FDP, and the TPP. And then this analysis, you know, uh, gives me the conditions under which my delta epsilon pairs. Uh, under which I can achieve various uh, FDP, TPP values. Um, but to wrap up my talk, I 
I think, okay, I have like one minute left. Um, I wanna say, I wanna just shout out uh, a, a, a piece of work um, that uh, I have uh, with, sorry, I'm skipping some slides. Um, okay. Uh, with uh, a few colleagues at the University of Cambridge. So this is with Oliver Fang, Ramji Venkataramanan, and Richard Samworth. And it's a tutorial article um, on AMP that was meant to kind of introduce AMP to statisticians. So in general, we wanted to um, kind of derive and motivate AMP without using uh, replica or belief propagation, since these are kind of ideas that uh, statisticians tend to not be as familiar with. Um, so if anyone has the bandwidth, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely looking for some feedback on um, the, the, the article and, you know, most of you guys are cited uh, a lot. So uh, that's just a, a quick plug. But one of the um, things that I think that's cool about this article is uh, we tried to kind of unify some of these ideas. And one of them is this, this program that, that Cedric used in his work and that I used here for Slope. Um, that's that of deriving exact asymptotic characterizations for estimators that are solutions to convex optimization problems. So in particular, this work provides kind of like a recipe for um, doing this. So, you know, anytime we have a, an estimator that's a solution to an optimization problem of this form, um, what that paper gives is a, a generalized AMP algorithm that has a fixed point that will solve this optimization problem. So I'm still thinking of, you know, some sort of GLM that's my model and I have a, a sort of a, a loss and a penalty that are separable and assumed to be convex. But, you know, um, these things, you know, well, let's, let's okay. With the, this simple sort of um, uh, optimization, uh, what we do is we provide the AMP algorithm that will have the, the, um, the fixed point that solves it. And then, you know, the work on behalf of the, the user is to then sort of verify the existence and uniqueness of the fixed point in the state evolution, and then prove the, the convergence of the AMP to the fixed point. And so um, truly like the step three is the hardest part um, as you know, usually the cost functions are not going to be strongly convex at the solution. So uh, showing that we converge, you know, um, takes a little bit of work, but uh, you know, uh, we give some strategies that other papers have, have done to, to, uh, to do this. So what we're hoping is that, you know, with this recipe, we kind of unified the work that, you know, um, folks did for the lasso and the robust M estimators and, you know, Pragya did for logistic regression. Um, and, you know, we did for slope here in a, a way that, that sort of just gives a recipe uh, that we think, you know, probably could be used more generally for GLMs um, of this sort. Um, so with that, um, I, I will stop. Uh, thanks everyone for the, the invitation and, um, I will pass the, the baton to uh, I think Joe's next, so.